Hey everybody, welcome to a special episode of Hashtag Side Hill Gill. This is a tech edition that I don't do enough of because it takes too much time to edit the films when it should be working. But I decided this is a problem that can stump up enough people and maybe I can help one or two of you, if not all of you, work your way through it. What are we fighting today? A warped, bent, cracked tunnel. This is on the Gen 4 Skidoo model. This occurs right where the drop brackets rivet to the tunnel. Mine picked up a little bit of damage from snow sliding off a roof, landed on the tunnel, and put a warp on the tunnel right where the drop brackets are. Two seasons, two seasons of riding. I didn't address the issue until the end of season two. Finally, just uh, took a couple one too many hits and split the entire tunnel from the bottom all the way to the break at the top. So, this uh, drop bracket is not gonna hold. It's split two to three different places. There's absolutely no tr structural integrity. What is the fix gonna be? I'm gonna cut spacers to go on the inside, and as far as the fix sandwiching the outside, I would love to get an external bumper that's with the tongue braces, such as this mountain armor rear bumper, which is what I wanted to put on the sled. Unfortunately, and this mirrors a lot of the manufacturers out there, the front of the bracing stops right at the edge of the drop bracket. So I need another, you know, six, eight inches to get past the, sh the uh, cracking on the tunnel to be able to sandwich on the inside and the tunnel reinforcement bumper on the outside. So there's what I found a few bumpers out there, it seems. I'm looking into Rogue Concepts, uh, Smith Weld. Um, I believe those are the only two. I think there's one other brand that I was investigating. I haven't found out yet. So, sadly for me, because Mountain Armor is the brand I like to support. It's a great bumper, but most of your rear bumpers will be the same. This is the notch out for your footboard angle support. So I need another minimum six, eight inches. And those two bumpers that I've seen, Smith Weld and Rogue Concepts, will get that extension that I need. So, without further ado, let's get to work. The latest from Carly Pierce and what he didn't do here inside RC Social Saloon. She's out on the road this summer with Blake Shelton, part of that back the honky tonk tour with Jackson Dean as well. All right, so. sled was on its track. That's okay. <laughs> yes, those aren't quite ready to come out yet. So go ahead and get this one while I'm here, huh? There she is. So, I'm going to work on getting this other one from the bottom side out, which I should have done while it was sitting upright. I got to get from underneath now. I'll be back. All right, guys, we're moving on to the next step. Where I left off, we were grinding all the rivets on the inside of the tunnel for the drop brackets here. They're ground completely flat down to the drop bracket. Even primed with the screwdriver. 
not coming off. So now we're down to drilling out the rivets. I'm piloting everything so I can drill through the holes without oblonging them with hopes of riveting up or bolting back together. So lots of drilling, not easy. Make sure you got sharp drill bits and patience. And a reversible drill. Right now I'm piloting. Not easy drilling. They're hardened rivets. So I'll come back to you when all 10 rivets are drilled out. I should be able to pop the drop brackets off. All right, guys, like I said, slow drill speed. They're hardened, maybe even stainless rivets. Tough drilling. One little secret, drilling tapping oil so you don't burn up your drill bit. It's helping me get this stuff drilled out. Like I said, 10 rivets all together. Reversible drill. Like I said, right now I'm piloting with the smaller drill bit. All right, guys, the tunnel repair continues. In this step, I'm going to go over the drop brackets or my tunnel stiffener real quick. So this is what I ended up doing to create a stiffener for the inside of the tunnel. Now, the reason I've welded this aluminum Onto the edge of the drop bracket is because if you tried to go over, it would leave a one eighth gap and you have minimal clearance inside your tunnel where your track is. So if you start building thickness, you run a risk of your track rubbing on either material, rivet heads, bolts. Not sure how we're putting this back together yet. So the fix I came up with was to weld one eighth inch, which is the thickness of your drop bracket. I went uh, eight inches each way. So as you can see, uh, by the way, the diamond plate is the, the absolute only aluminum I can source here in Elko. Your standard supplies like Ace Hardware, a Cal Ranch, Home Depot, at the most they're gonna give you two inch by eight inch flat bar, which wasn't thick enough. I wanted to get some meat under here and back at the rear taper of the tunnel is about a three inch gap. So I'll have a little extra room when I head forward on the tunnel, but I wanted maximum surface area, which is what I've got. Eighth inch material. Again, for the non-fabricators, the reason I stayed with eight, instead of going thicker like a three sixteenths a quarter, one was, it wasn't available. But two is when you're welding this light material, the thick material going to the thinner material is going to mess up with your heat distribution, right? That's a welding thing. So for you guys who are fabricating this at home, you're going to go to a welder and you're picking up your supplies. That's the reason for going one eight all the way along the drop bracket. So the heat rippled the tunnel which i i knew was going to kind of be an issue not a worry one of the things i learned was as i started drilling out starting with these lower brackets they were about a quarter inch drill bit worth sized hole your hole top four holes on your drop bracket are smaller three sixteenths rivets so you can see the difference in the hole size I ended up drilling quarter on one side, so I had to fill in the holes. 
to get back to the right size and to get those holes realigned I'm just going to use my good drop bracket as a template and I'll just drill straight through once I line them all up. Your bottom two holes were about a quarter inch drill bit, a 3 16 or so for your upper four for your rivets. Again, that's one side. That's the other side. So we filled everything in. I'm gonna grind it all flat, drill new holes. And as I was saying, the stock rear bumpers, okay, that most everybody comes up and they'll stop right about where the weld is so I don't have any material to sandwich. My material up there. I'm gonna go with the mountain armor bumper which is kind of a standard tunnel bracket design. I'm gonna put it on there so I can get back on the snow and I believe with the stiffener kind of tying in right here with the material going forward that I'll be able to stiffen up the bumper enough to run. I didn't video the work today which was grinding all of the welds flat on the tunnel and with a two hammers for you guys who haven't done much body work you know a big heavy hammer and a little ball peen whacking out your low spots and trying to level out all the warps and the bulges both from welding and from the tunnel being split out kind of curvatured all the metal. So other than just ripples and, and low spots, high spots, it turned out pretty good. What I've got going on at this moment is I put the bracket in because with everything kind of finger tight, there was a little bit of play on these drop brackets. So I wanted the axle in and the bogey wheels before I started drilling the holes through the backside. So I'm gonna get I've already got some holes started where I started on the other side. Let's take a look at those real quick so I can put a picture to my references. All right, so this side I was able to catch. So I had a few holes already in place. So once I stuck the bolts into the drop brackets and the rear bogies so I could get my skid situated with everything loose, that kind of moved the drop bracket around and kind of settled it in place. That's where I started with the quarter inch hole here and I drilled through the back side these upper two holes, got everything set and now I'll be able to continue with another 3 16 hole, another quarter inch hole. I'm waiting on these two until the running board, or excuse me, the rear bumper with the tunnel stiffener comes in play. Um, these are just alignment bolts. I got them fingered tight with nuts. And I put this one in finger tight when I was placing everything. I've since removed it. Let's take a look at the other side. So as I said, this side has not been drilled at all. So I've got the two bolts here and one quarter inch bolt here. That's got everything in place. So you see, we're still loose. So now that the track is all kind of Got everything centered where it wants to be. I'll come up in the backside and punch whatever I can reach. These two, maybe the third one here. Get them tight. And then I'll flip it back over on the side. Pull the bolts. Drop the skid again. Roll it out of the way and finish drilling all the holes for the drop bracket. Getting it all tight before I flip it back up. And reset everything tight back together. So as you can see, it's turning out well. The other thing I should mention, as I just took that video that I am not re-riveting everything back into place. So I'm a firm believer in the rivets we basically get at our local suppliers, like hardware stores, ranch supplies, whatnot. The aluminum rivets don't really hold over time. They'll kind of start wobbling out and work their way loose. So I went and bought stainless hardware. Stainless hardware with flat washers and nylocks, a combination of blue Loctite and red Loctite. Again, red Loctite with Phillips head screws probably is gonna come off. But the fact is, if I ever have a problem and have to replace this tunnel again, I'm going to end up dropping the track and grinding from the backside flush, and then I can just knock the screw out. Basically like rivets, only in my mind stronger. So as you can see, the problem with it, Home Depot sells everything in about a two-pack, and I needed about 20 to 30 of everything. So combination of stainless nylocks, 
flat washers, combinations of quarter inch screws, and 1032 wide heads. Where are we at? So, that's where we're at with hardware. Time to get back to doing some drilling. So I'm gonna leave the track in place until I get some screws in there to hold everything together. Get a little bit of light in there. Let's take a look. All right, so if we take a look down in there, we can see, I just drilled the three holes. I'll get them tightened up right as it sits. That'll solidify the drop bracket and the tunnel stiffener. And once it is tight, We'll pop the bolt, pop the bolt, swing the track out of the way. And I'll probably start work with getting the foot stirrup back on. All right, guys. I, I Before I started doing those bolts, I actually went in and took an hour break for dinner. And when I did so, I messed up. So as my battery light dies here, you can see the rivet right there it kicked out my my bracket you can see the difference I have a little overhang there a lot of overhang there so even though my drop bracket was aligning with my axle on this bracket I actually just ground down the back side of that rivet so it would sit flush so even though I just tightened up these three bolts I'm gonna loosen everything up. Go put my light on the charger, grind that rivet flat so that the tunnel bracket or the tunnel stiffener can drop over it and help in my alignment. All right, guys, that took you a couple five minutes. So, as you can see, I got my three starters in. So now my bracket's not gonna move. Time to Pop the bolts, swing the track out of the way, and pre-drill everything from inside the tunnel. All right, guys, I put one side together here, as I've been working. So as we take a look at what's going on, you see the tunnel brace underneath. So some considerations. Got good bracing here with four 1032s and there will be two quarter inch here so going forward I just put two in the front one in center that gives up pretty much a five spot okay now the reason I left this one empty I did pre-drill this hole on the top side you can see the end of the bracket is about right here I haven't drilled anything on this side. So, this side, I haven't, I gotta flip the sled over. I will have a pre-drilled hole here. I'll leave the rest of it. Reason being, as we get the mountain armor bumper and kinda line up where the holes will be, Okay, you can see the edge of the bracket, it's going to come right up in here. So I'm going to put one bolt hole right in the top center of this gap. And then when we drill through this one, we should be able to hit it again. So we'll have one, two, three, four, 
coming through this plate. But you got to have the bumper on before you drill those holes. All right. So as we start to look at our bracing for the bumper here, again, pre-drilled this hole. Existing holes, the tunnel support stops right here. I used 8 inch. So if you went 10 inch, you could even grab this bolt. So I'll grab this one. As I come through, I'm going to stick another bolt right in here. And we'll be able to grab this one. Maybe. That one feels like it just might miss. So, possibly I'll stick two right here. We'll see where that one ends up. If it grabs, I'll be good with one, two, three. So that's how we're going to support. You can see here's our other three, one, two, and three. And we got tiny, plenty of support here. So let's take a look down inside so you can get a visual on the tunnel support. So that's what it looks like from the inside. Your aluminum is eighth inch thick off of the drop bracket. Again, I didn't stack material because your tolerances are pretty tight between your lugs. And by the time I got hardware on there as well, I didn't want to be gaining thickness. I built eight, excuse me, eight inch is the max you want to go, call it seven, would put you a little closer, but you can see the diamond plate comes right to the brake line of the tunnel, so you can kind of get a look at the hardware. All right guys, so like I said, let's run through things really quick. Starting at the back, this is one eighth material for the bumper. So these are your half inch bolts as you're going through one eighth material and less than one eighth for the tunnel. Everything's uh, nylock with thread Loctite on the backside. Half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch. Those are quarter inch bolts. Now my tunnel support starts right here. Okay, that means I have half inch here because we're going through eighth inch, half inch here. Now we're down to three quarters because I'm going through the bumper and through the eighth inch aluminum on the backside, sandwiching it. Okay, same thing, three quarter inch as I'm going through double thickness material. As I move up to the front, I'm only going through the tunnel support and the tunnel. So we're back to half inch, half inch, half inch with lock washers and nuts or nylocks with red lock type. Three quarter inch, three quarter inch, you have your two bolts. Oh, as I blur everything out real quick. Okay. One that ties into your, these that ties in your running boards to your drop bracket. This one ties in to the drop bracket and the support. These are both three quarter inch. And as you can see, the 1032, I got a large head versus a regular just to provide support. These are three quarter, I think I said, or did I say half? Excuse me, 1032 by half. So again, red lock tight, now locks on the backside. It's going through the tunnel and one eighth inch aluminum, which is the drop bracket on the backside. Well, guys, the Gen 4 tunnel fabrication repair is finished. So basically, this was a two day job, maybe tack on three days if you need to track down a welder to do some welding for you on the aluminum. The repair came out really good. Uh, what I want to go over real quick, what you need for this job is pretty basic other than the welding. Uh, hardware wise, basically on a 1032 by half inch, you need eight of those. Those will be for the upper drop bracket support. We'll show you a close up of those. You need a one quarter by three quarter 10 of those, okay, one quarter by half, you need 18 of those, and you can go with nylocks or lock washers and nuts. Now, I did everything in stainless, 
I got a handful of flat washers and I used them as needed to take up, you know, space. A lot of those would allow just the thread and the nut on the back side and nylock. So I used red Loctite on everything. Again, they're Phillips head, pan head screws. Top, a quarter inch drill bit, three sixteenths drill bit. Your drill, three eighths wrench, seven sixteenths wrench, and a number two screwdriver. Um, some spray paint, some spray primer. You'll need yourself a reinforcing rear bumper. Uh, the only thing I haven't done is when you take your running board support off, there's two large rivets that come up through the bottom about a quarter inch diameter. Uh, I ended up grinding them and knocking them through. I haven't put that hardware back in. So right now you have your top bolt on the support and there's one bolt that ties it in on the running board. I could come back later and maybe put one through bolt through. I'm gonna kind of ride it and see how it looks. Pretty sturdy. Um, I wouldn't rivet it back in. Like I said, a through bolt with a, some kind of nylock, grind the head or the threads off to flush it. Red Loctite again so it can't work its way out. And uh, something I forgot to add in your tool list, you will need a grinder with some flapper disc, a hard grinder to take those welds down, flapper disc to clean them up. So I also used, as I forgot, as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you've never worked with light thin metal, you need a good heavy hammer, get yourself a good solid ball peen. Uh, I also used a combination square, as I'm remembering tools now. So using your combination square or straight edge, you can slide up and down and use this for dead weight to hold and then you tap it. So if you've never used those kind of tools, done that kind of work, be prepared to, unless you have the fabricator, whoever welded up your sled, do it for you. So the sled's been off the snow for a year while I didn't mess with it. I bought the turbo. So this really was not a priority list until I burned up the top end on the turbo two weeks ago. That pressed back into service. It is now the third week of March. It was time to hurry up and get the stock Skinny 850 back on the snow and get that tunnel done. So I'm super happy with the work. It came out really good. 